If you're watching this, you're probably at least slightly familiar with the story. Peter Parker, with his newfound spider powers, finds himself in the path of a burglar fleeing from a police officer. The officer shouts at him to help, but instead of swinging into action like we've come to expect, Parker chooses instead to do nothing, all but guaranteeing the criminal's escape. The officer confronts Parker, who responds that he's only looking out for number one now, and dismissively waves him off. Some time later, he returns home from a busy day of being a celebrity to find a police car in his driveway. The officers inform Peter that his uncle has been murdered, but that they have the suspect holed up in a warehouse. Peter frantically runs up to his room and changes into his Spider-Man costume before swinging to the scene. The fugitive is hiding in shadow when Spider-Man confronts him. He knocks out the suspect to find that it is the same burglar that he let escape before. He captures the burglar and, with newfound motivation, takes on the role of web-slinging, wall-crawling crime fighter that he's retained for over 50 years. The question, though, is Peter Parker responsible for the death of Uncle Ben? Is he at least partially to blame for the tragedy? My name's Jordan, this is Comic Ethos, the show where we take a look at your favorite comic book characters and stories and find out what makes them tick. One of the most recurring and well-known phrases in comic books is, with great power comes great responsibility. So much so that in more recent Spider-Man films, the line has been slightly changed because audiences have come to expect it. But your father lived by a philosophy, a principle really. He believed that, that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. The question that Tom Holland as Spider-Man is dealing with here, the idea that he's to blame for the negative things that happen because of his inaction uh, is, is something that philosophers have been dealing with for millennia. It's a question of moral responsibility. Whether we can and should receive praise or blame for the choices that we make. And it seems pretty straightforward, at least to Stan Lee, who wrote Amazing Fantasy 15, which all of those films and origins are based off of the origin of Spider-Man. He, he, he clearly takes this idea that we are to blame for the things that happen because of our choices. If Peter Parker lets a burglar go and that burglar murders Uncle Ben, then Peter Parker is somewhat responsible for the death of Uncle Ben. But what if he didn't have a choice? The question of moral responsibility is not even close to a new concept. Greek philosophers like Aristotle, Socrates, and Lysippus formed thought on the concept over 2,000 years ago. And if we're being honest, as much as those ideas have become more nuanced and shaped, we haven't made much progress when it comes to answering the actual question. For purposes of this video, we're going to take a look at the three prevailing ideas when it comes to this concept. The idea of determinism, philosophical libertarianism, and compatibilism. And we're going to take a look at the most general basic forms of these ideas, simply because it w it's unreasonable and frankly impossible to make a 10 minute video about a concept that philosophers have spent entire lifetimes on. Um, so I'll give you the basic gist of it, and hopefully you can do your own research from there and come up with your own ideas. The first idea is that of determinism. Determinism is the belief that all events are determined by causes external to the will. To illustrate that, we'll go back to Peter Parker, the character in the panels of Amazing Fantasy number 15. If we were to assume that he were a person that actually existed within those static panels, he could never have made the choice to stop the burglar because his choices were still being caused by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Even if that two-dimensional Spider-Man wanted to make a different choice, he couldn't, because his actions were caused by forces outside of himself. To go one step further, a heart determinist would argue that because those events are determined by causes external to the will, and that free will is incompatible with that notion, there can't be any free will at all. And for a comic book character, that works. There are no stakes. We can't hold Spider-Man responsible for the death of Uncle Ben or Gwen Stacy because they're just acting on the will of someone else. 
And even if we could, it wouldn't matter because they're just characters that exist in fiction and not the real world. But what about us? Are all of our choices and actions predetermined by quantum mechanics, God, a flying spaghetti monster, or even a mystical spider totem? And more importantly, if so, can we really be blamed for anything we do wrong, or can we take credit for the good things that we do? Unsatisfied by this argument, a philosophical libertarian would argue the opposite, that we do indeed have free will, and because of this, determinism cannot be true. This solves the problem of moral responsibility by holding the power of choice in our hands. A philosophical libertarian would, like Stan Lee, say that Peter Parker made the choice to let the burglar escape, and is therefore to blame for any evil that the burglar commits afterwards. That would wrap things up tighter than a mugger in Manhattan, but unfortunately libertarianism can be somewhat difficult to defend. A standard argument against libertarianism is, in short, if determinism is true, if Spider-Man could not not have let that criminal go, then there's no free will. Conversely, if indeterminism is true, then chance must exist, and if our actions are at least partially caused by chance, then we lack control to the point where we can't even be held responsible for our actions anyway. There are dozens and dozens of wordings and versions of the standard argument, and each one generates a response, and they're all worth looking into, and they're all worth studying so we can formulate our own opinion. But for the sake of time, so far we're left with basically two ideas. The first idea that, yes, we are indeed in charge of our own destiny, and we are responsible for the things that we do, and we are to blame for the bad things that happen because of our actions. But we have to accept sometimes shaky arguments to get there. Or the entire universe is on a preset course and this is a computer program and we're not responsible for anything we do good or bad and frankly for most people that's unsatisfactory enter compatibilism compatibilism is the concept that free will and determinism are in some way well compatible how might i have free will if a mystical spider totem has been guiding my every move you might ask well, I'm glad you brought that up, J. Michael Straczynski, and in short, the answer is definitions. More specifically, the definition of free will, which, for purposes of this argument, we'll define as the ability to control one's actions to the point wherein one can be held morally responsible. Again, while we're looking at the most simple versions of these ideas, and classical compatibilism isn't widely accepted today, it gives us a good baseline from which to work with, so we're going to just run with that idea. Thomas Hobbes wrote in Leviathan that a person's freedom consists in his finding no stop in doing what he has the will, desire, or inclination to do. What he's effectively saying is that if Spider-Man wanted to let the burglar run by and there was nothing that forced him to act in opposition to that desire, then he indeed made a free will decision. Conversely, let's say that Spidey actually really wanted to stop the fugitive, but unbeknownst to him, a time-traveling Dr. Octopus had implanted a chip in his brain that would interfere with any decision to stop a crime, and cause him to choose to do nothing instead. A compatibilist might argue that in that moment he didn't have free will and could not be held morally responsible, even though, by all accounts, it appeared to be a free will decision. Obviously there is an abundance of information and argument and thought on this concept and because of that I haven't even begun to scratch the surface so I have left links in the description box below of places where I did my research um, and places that made it the concept simpler to grasp for me and, and hopefully you too can check those out and develop opinions of your own on that note what do you think are we responsible for the good things that we do is Peter Parker to blame for the death of his uncle Ben are we to be held liable if we publicly announce our secret identity, resulting in the critical wounding of our mother figure and closest relative to the point where we make a deal with the devil analog, sacrificing our beloved and well-established marriage in order to save her in one of the most loathsome and long-standing retcons of all time? Or is everything designed and destined to be this way and there isn't really any power or responsibility at all? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Once again, this is Comic Ethos, my name is Jordan, and as always, read comics and get smarter.